Greetings all, this is Harry Nick and today I'm joined by a special guest. He, you... he tied me up, this is very uncomfortable for me. Uh, yes, let, let's go with that. Ah. This is uh, Owen from the Hell of a Podcast. Hell, Hell of a Pilot Podcast. Hell of a Podcast, I love it, that's a better one. <laughs> we should have used that in the start, oh well. Absolutely, well it is a Hell of a Podcast. Um, you oh, guys you. have had me on several times and yes. I've now had two of you on. I just need to get Mike on to finish the Triforce. Yes. And that will be fantastic. If you guys are interested in listening to their podcast, and you should, it's excellent. They speak about all things X-Wing. Uh, here on the screen is all the links and everything. You can find you through Podbean and yes. through YouTube. Yes, YouTube. We, we don't really do a whole lot through YouTube. It's mostly just, here's our, here's our stuff. But if you follow us on Facebook, we, uh, we, have, we have memes, we have skits. We now have a radio show. Excellent. Right, let's get on to some more of the goodies from the FFG unboxing late last week. So, for the Scum and Villainy faction. I have you here, Owen, because like me... I am me, Scum and Villainy. You are Scum and Villainy, incarnate, yes. as am I. The, the god race. Absolutely. <laughs> Let, let's go with that. <laughs> so going through each of these ships in order as you might see them in a list builder. Let's start off with the aggressor, the IGs. Uh, the core stats of the ship have pretty much stayed the same. The action bar is the same, except focus has become calculate. Which you explained to me earlier, is there such a better way to do it for droids? I really, really like yeah, it's meant to represent kind of droids trying to be like people, but not as good. Kind of like crappy focus, um, I think Alex Davies described it as. Basically, it's a focus token that you can only use to convert one result. But there are ways of getting multiple tokens, and you can spend multiple tokens in the same dice roll, unlike focus. I really do like that. I don't think there's a whole lot of other ships out there that can do lots of stacking of tokens, and this is one of the only ships that can stack you know, stack calculate. So yeah, I just, I just, I just really dig this way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, push the limits and all that kind of stuff. It's the gone. Game. There, there's no more. There's no more really um, degenerative token stacking anymore. At least not from what we can see so far. And the stat line remains the same as well, apart from the fact that we've traded off one shield for one hull. Again, I, I keep repeating myself, but this is a push from FFG to put more hull in the game. Yeah, that, to up the chances of getting crits. Yeah, and I think crits are one of the reasons why you play the game, or at least for a thematic way and it's, it's really really interesting when you flip the cards and yeah I, I appreciate them putting more hull in and less shields because shields are just eh Shields are boring. Shields are boring. Um, and the crits are less powerful overall, it seems, but we're going to see more of them, which yeah. is really cool. Moving on to the actual pilots, we have here RG-88A. Oh, also, before we go on, we have the burnt-in ability for the ship, Advanced Droid Brain. Mm. After you perform a Calculate Action Gain 1 Calculate token. I do like the fact that these are now stuck on the cards. Remember, everyone had these uh, the jokes, like, why don't you just staple it to the card? I'm like, well, they've literally just done that. Yeah, there was that meme going around of people super gluing push limit onto some to fell. Yeah, <laughs> that kind now, of thing. now they've just done it for you. Like, it's, it's, so, it's so elegant. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And this burnt in ability is really cool. As I said before, um, we were talking about token stacking, and this is a basically a burnt in way of doing token stacking. And IG-88A has changed massively. Uh, it's no longer about blowing up ships and regenerating shields and doing something that nobody wanted. It's at the start of the engagement phase, you may choose one friendly ship with a calculate on its action bar at range 1 to 3. Important to note, that means you can't be touching it. Mm. It must be uh, clear in range 1 to 3. If you do, transfer one of your Calculate tokens to it, which oh, is a Oh, does that make it a, like a, a mini Manaru? A mini Manaru for droids. For or other IG-88s. That's, that's awesome. Not just a buddy for other IG-88s. Also mm. a buddy for like Guri and Forlom. Any other droid pilots we haven't seen yet? Remember, there are added pilots in the game, so perhaps there'll be more droids. We don't know. We're going to see the Guri meta. Absolutely. Oh, I'm looking forward to the Guri so meta. Absolutely. IG-88B is a functional reprint of what he used to be. After performing an attack that misses, you may perform a bonus cannon attack. Great. IG-88C is also a functional reprint. After you perform a boost action, you may perform an evade action. Amazing. IG-88D is oh. better. A similar, it's so good. similar design than what it used to be, but while you uh, execute a Segnor's loop, uh, left or right, you may use another template at the same speed instead using the left or right hard turn of the same direction or the straight template. It used to only be hard turns. Mm. And now it's straight as well. And I like this a lot because I felt like the old ability was good, but... If your opponent was blocking one, they're probably blocking the other. Yeah. The hard turn or the soft turn. Yeah. Having... Now, so well, this we still also uh, be aware that the signal loops are only on the threes, so it's a three hard to 
Correct. And yeah. a three straight. So, but that is that's some that's some big movement. Absolutely. And by adding the straight maneuver in as well, it mm. be- becomes a K turn essentially. It means you're probably always going to have one of those slots free. Yeah. And that really it, it means you can dial in S loops and be a, a lot less scared of them getting blocked because S loops getting blocked is so feel bad. Yeah. Um, because you don't turn your ship around, you ram into your opponent, and, and you then get you go stressed. off the board. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much <laughs> happens quite a lot. Um, and this is just a great way of doing it. Also, good to know that the IGs are now in medium-sized bases. Yes. Again, so they're a little bit tinier and they can fit into more gaps and this is going to help further with that. So it's just sort of 75% of a large base, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Halfway between a small and a large. Okay. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, the schooner of... Um, the schooner. <laughs> the schooner of ship bases, basically. <laughs> That's the way I think of it. Um, other Australians will get that joke. Um, also, IG2000 has another functional reprint. Don't know the costing, but I'm going to guess it's zero again. I don't see why they wouldn't. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the fire spray. Um, fire much sp- hype. Much hype indeed. Oh, love it. Love it so much. Uh, you guys were actually talking recently on a podcast about the fire spray and how it sort of went bad. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> it, just, it just over time, like, it just came out so very, very early that... <sighs> Especially its Imperial thing. No one flew no one flew Imperial Spy Spray. And now there isn't one. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, I recently flew it in the tournament because of... Um, I called it practicing with training weights on. <laughs> it's bad. It's like the newer the ship is you're fighting against, the worse it fares against. Oh. Which is a, a thing with power creep. But anyway, um, this has changed a lot. It's now in a medium-sized base. That dial. Oh, man, that dial. It's, it's beautiful. So our green maneuvers, or our blue in this case, uh, they've added in the three forward. Instead of a 3k turn, we have three Talon Rolls, uh, mm. which is awesome. Talon Rolls are, are just wildly underappreciated. Absolutely. And this is on a medium base as well. Oh, um, it's gone wherever Alongside, I believe, the Skurg Bomber, these are the only two to get Talon Rolls, which is going to be awesome. Oh, and one Hards, because why not? It doesn't have the three hard turn anymore, but um, I'd gladly trade it for the one hard. Oh, day. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and those Talon Rolls alone. Talon Rolls over k turns basically means you're far more likely to stay in the fight. Mm. And I like to use the fire spray as a brawler with my own tactics, so that really fits in with what I feel the ship wants to do. Yeah, absolutely. That's it, you know, because you want to be in there. You want to get that reverse firing arc, so you, you want to be doing those hard those hard turns to either get in one side or the other. And it, I think I think FFG's done really well here. Absolutely. I'll cast Scarlet with the talent oh, as well. Yes! Yes, yes just, just, just perfectly exposing the rear back. arc. Uh, moving on to the ship's core stats, we have a few changes on the action bar. It gets a white boost, which I'm so happy about. Uh, focus Surprise, and, I'm here. Focus and target lock remains. And instead of evade, we have a red reinforce, which I think is fairer. Yeah, evade is basically... On, on these big ships, they're saying, okay, we're no longer getting evades, we're getting... Uh, reinforce. Yeah. So, uh, also, evade and reinforce have changed moving into the new game. Evade now change dice results. They do not add results. You cannot yield three evade results from your two green dice anymore. Cool. And reinforce reduces your opponent's dice to a minimum of one. So, if they only roll one, he does nothing. But it still does that whole hard cap of uh, reducing one hit every single turn. And it's kind of what they've done with these large ships. Instead of giving evades, they now have reinforce. So for clarity, with these reinforces, do they only count for the front arc and rear arc? Or is it 50-50? It's going to be for the front and rear section of the ship. Section of the ship, Because okay. every single template has those notches put into it. It doesn't have the full dotted line like mm-hmm. the other type gunship does. But it does have all the quadrants and little slices oh, and everything, uh, which is really good. It future proofs it future proofs against designs that may want to use them in the future. Uh, apart from that, uh, the stats are all the same: uh, three red dice at the front or back, two evade, six hull, and four shields. Uh, let's move on to a couple of the pods we have here in front of us. Cass Scarlet, she's back. Mm, oh, she is back. While you perform a primary attack, if there is at least one friendly non-limited ship at range zero of the defender. As in a, a Z95 that dumped into yeah, them. Yeah. Uh, roll one additional attack die. So, Kath wants to fly with their pirates finally. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I see. That's that's going to be tough. That's a lot of boxes to tick. Yeah. Um, one friendly, non-limited ship at range zero of the defender. So, you have to have bumps to get this to tick over. That's right. That's right. So, we're looking at the binary pirates or the bin- binary... I, I've I always know. said binary. Yeah, binary pirates. Let's go with that. Mm. Um, it's a flavorful. Uh, it's a flavorful match. Don't forget that Calf Scarlet ability is sort of represented through her title card. So we'll get onto that in a tick. Okay, that's not been lost out of the game. One thing I want to say though, I love that we've used the Imperial Calf Scarlet art. I think it looks better than the 
old scum it does, art. It does. The old scum Cathcart art has been added onto the Marauder title, which we'll talk about in a tick. We also have added to the game Koshka Frost, um, the icy professional. I like that pun. Uh, oh, in- wow. <laughs> That's horrible. Uh, I know, man. Um, yeah, subtitles are always fun. Initiative three, while you defend or perform an attack, if the enemy is stressed, you may re-roll one of your dice. That's not too bad. It's, it's good. It's solid. You know, there's not a whole lot of boxes to tick. It, it'll make your opponent really double think about, um, you know, taking those red actions or or doing that push. I mean, you can't. It's not really a push now, is it? It's just sort of um, you do. I'm, this still, gonna I'm still going to call it push. I'm still going to call it push. I actually was pretty down on this when I first saw it because it was a reveal back with the original articles. But uh, as some of you guys pointed out on the comments, uh, yes. Incidental stress is going to be much more of a thing. So mm. yeah, makes perfect sense. Is there any uh, actions that move over to other actions that uh, do not? create red actions not so far excellent not so far so it's practically push yeah pretty much pretty much also in the marauder title while you perform a primary rear arc attack you may re-roll one attack die so pretty much what Kath was doing but it's like Kath for everyone absolutely and add the gunner slot and the gunner slot allows you to take veteran tail gunner which allows you to take an attack at the front and then at the back Amazing. Amazing. We don't, know the, we, don't, we don't know the costings of all this stuff yet, but the gunner slot seems really legit right now. Yeah. They've moved a lot of the old crew into the gunner slot, and I think that's going to be a lot of fun. The slave one here. After you reveal a hard turn or bank, you may set your maneuver dial to the same speed in the bearing the other direction. That's... I, mm, that's Add a torpedo slot. Uh, well, great, I guess. Well, this is the old Boba Fett ability from the Empire. That's terrible. It's, it is pretty <laughs> terrible. However, however, I put it to you, Owen. Yeah. With the current Boba Fett getting yeah. re-rolls for everything at range one, yeah. this is a great whoopsie card. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair um, enough. Like, this, is, this is for people who have never flown before and haven't learned to turn their entire dial around. Well, I, that's, that's basically was always my thinking. Um, and as a pilot ability, I think that was terrible. Mm. But remember, pilot abilities are always meant to be better than uh, upgrade card abilities. So I look at this and go, you know what? If it costs zero points, I'll chuck it on Boba Fett because yeah, okay, that's good. Once point. a tournament, it might help me trigger more of his ability. Zero points is also zero points. Um, also, arc dodging very relevant. Um, Boba Fett's initiative oh, yeah. five. Um, that could be the difference. Yeah. Um, also has boost and all that kind of stuff. So I think this is going to be good because it's tacked on with other abilities. Uh, the the fact that it used to cost a pilot ability was bad. I yeah. think now it's just a little bit better. I don't think it's great, no. but I think it's going to be very usable. Moving on to the G1A Starfighter. Okay, so having a look at the action bar, we've lost Evade, but we've gained Jam. It's, Feels fair. It's amazing. This is, this is the ship that everyone bought because it had uh, Zuckers in it, then Zuckers got nerfed and no one bought the ship. But <laughs> hey, now it's cool. Now it is cool, for sure. Um, yeah, if you don't own it already and you are going to get the Scum Upgrade Pack, you might as well just buy it now. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, because you're basically getting that value for free at that point. Uh, Jam's cool. I think it's much more relevant yes. for this ship. It's meant to be like a toolbox ship with cloaking device and barrel roll and tractor beams and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Jam feels more appropriate than Evade. That's for sure. Completely agree. Absolutely. It, it's um, going it's, it's to be up in their business and messing with their stuff, and that's what you want. Absolutely. Uh, having a look at the stat line, uh, added a hull, no complaints. Sounds okay. good to me. Yeah. Uh, taking a look at the dial. So a few color changes here. The three forward is no longer green, or blue in this case. Mm. It's now white. Uh, our red actions. Oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of red on this dial. Um, there always was. Um, instead of a 3K and a 4K, we now have a 2K and a 4K, which is cool. Yeah, the three banks are still red. The four straight's now red. The color has been massively downgraded, yeah. or difficulty, I should it say. It does stop now. It does a full stop, and I think that's good. Um, the 2K and the stop makes me think this is meant to be a bit more of a knife fighter, a bit more about keeping up in your opponent's grill and mm. staying up in your opponent's grill. Oh, it, cool I think that. it's supposed to be more, or in my opinion, I think it's more of like a an annoyance. It's not really, it's not going to do a whole lot, especially with its... Um, I mean, it's just going to stick around. It's going to jam things. And when you don't want it to be there, it'll be there because it, it has that red stop. And that's... Yeah, that's, I, I think the red stop... Like, It's very easy to say this would be a massive downgrade, but red stop is a big deal. It is a big deal. Is this a small base or a medium base? Uh, this is a medium base now as yeah, well. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, it was one of... It was almost as big as a lot of the large ships. Yeah. Which was kind of crazy. Uh, also worth noting, if it still has a system slot, it can still take advanced sensors. So it can do like the jam and full stop and that kind of stuff. Oh, excellent. That's what you want to hear. Uh, yeah, and that might be that might make it more valuable. Again, it would points cost, blah blah blah, we don't know yet. We'll mm. find out very soon. We also had revealed the Mist Hunter. 
uh, which just adds a cannon slot and barrel roll. It used to force you to take the tractor beam. Now it's just the cannon slot. Which is great. Yeah. It's because cannons really, are terrifying. Well, it really is like a B-Wing now. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> it was very close before. Now it feels even closer. Even but, with the barrel roll. Which is fine. Damn. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll see how it interacts with certain cannons. We don't have... Many of them revealed. I think we have HLC and Tractor Beam, and that's it right now. Great. Yeah, so we'll see what happens with that when we get a bit more revealed. And we also have the four LOM pilot revealed and the Zuckus crew card, which we'll talk about now because it is meant to pair with the four LOM crew card. It still does. Um, their abilities are pretty much in the same design space they used to be. Four LOM, of course, that's Calculate. After you fully execute a red maneuver, gain a Calculate token. It kind of feels like Outlaw Tech. Um, yeah. Outlaw Tech was um, do a red maneuver, you get a focus token from first edition. It didn't say you have to fully execute, but um, I, I think that fully execute is actually a good good thing. Like you have to actually complete that movement, or else. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, it's kind of like you don't get an action if you bump. You don't get your token if you bump. That's how it should be. Then again, like a uh, a jam action to red hard stop to calculate. Oh, that's an annoyance. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, again, this is what this ship's trying to do. And I think it's achieving its dreams better in second edition because of how they've changed the rules. Mm. Also, the second part is his original text, well, a functional reprint anyway. At the start of the end phase, you may choose a friendly ship at range 0 to 1, so you can be touching. Including yourself. That's right. Ah, uh, yes. If you do, transfer one of your stress tokens to that ship. That's right. Stress yourself with your stealth. That'd be great. That's right. So it, it works <laughs> great with Zuckus, and it also works great with the first ability. So you can do those K turns, the one hards, the mm. full stop. Uh, the full stop with this is fantastic. That's really annoying. You can say in situ and just pass the stress tokens. Okay. De-stress yourself, keep doing the full stop, turn after turn. All right. Yeah. So if you park someone up right behind you, you could hit you could hit a zero stop with this uh with doing the move, with the action before. So you can jam someone, stop, calculate pass that stress token to someone behind you who's going to continually be doing a one hard right into the back of you not moving anywhere if you set it up right yes amazing yeah that sounds really <laughs> annoying I mean it's it's you know these things are theoretical they may not happen all that often I don't know how I don't know how useful it will be but, <laughs> but we got to try it sometime yeah exactly that's, that's the main thing we're scum players after all exactly let's move on to the Hawk 290 also my favourite ship yeah the really mighty Hawk cool. flies again oh wow it, it's got a serious it's so upgrade now uh, not so much with the ship's core stats, more with the Moldy Crow title, but the, the core stats have still had a bit of an upgrade. It now can stop, which is I love. Uh, now the only the only hard, only red dial on it is the three turns, which is, that's how they had it anyway, so... Well, it was oh. the three banks before. Oh, wow. It was the three it banks. now... Oh. So those three banks are now white. The mighty crow flies again. Yeah, the four forward is now white instead of red, and the three forward is green, so a colour upgrade overall. And the full stop. I'm getting the impression they're putting full stops on ships that aren't uh, like high speed attack fighters. Mm. Uh, they're utility fighters like the G1A or the Hawk and that kind of stuff. And that mm. makes a lot of sense. Uh, let's have a look at the action bar because this is insane. <laughs> um, focus to red, move the arc. Mm -hmm. uh, target lock to red, move the arc. Red boost, move the arc. Or red jam. I love me some red jam. I love me some red jam. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, this is cool. This is cool. This a lot, is so good. A lot of ways <laughs> to move the arc. Uh, bear in mind, it's only a two primary out of the mobile arc so nothing too crazy it's an upgrade from one only at the front <laughs> I, I, I will say that at least um, listen I killed someone with that one red yeah it always feels good it does it, it feels amazing that one Hail Mary at range three if you get it at range three you always <laughs> feel fantastic um, oddly enough this is one of the few ships to actually get an improved ratio of hull to shield it used to have four hull and one shield now mm. it has Three hull and two shields. Yeah, it blew. It when it when it got hit in the last game, it, it just goes. Oh, it just much. goes immediately. There is such little chance that you'll manage to negate any critical hits. Mm. It only takes one other hit, and that happens. Now, there's if there's a critical hit in the first what in the first time it attacks, mm. there's a good chance that you'll negate it, and that's good. That's good. It's good enough to have that. Uh, Moldy Crow. Tell me about this Moldy Crow. Get excited. Uh, okay, so the Moldy Crow title. Be more hyped. Come on. Uh, this is on Rebel or Scum. Basically, in case you guys aren't aware, the Moldy Crow was, was introduced in the Dark Forces computer game. Yes. But the Moldy Crow in the EU history did appear on some Scum pilots as well as Kyle Katarn and Jan Orr's. And this is a massive upgrade. It used to just say you don't get rid of your focus tokens in a turn. It still says that. You can keep up to two focus tokens. But it also gives you a three dice primary at the front, <laughs> which is seriously good. <laughs> We're talking about a ship that only used to have a one dice primary at the front. 
Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, look, the older the ship is, the more severe these upgrades oh, are. Pretty Caleb much. is going to love this. Absolutely. I'm so excited. Absol- I'm so excited for this. Now, don't get too hard. Oh, we don't know how much it's going to cost. I know. I know. It could cost oh, a, fly regardless. a thousand <laughs> points, Owen. We don't know. This we is don't true. know. Um, I, I'm guessing it's going to be significantly more than the, uh, than the uh, equivalent three points of first edition. Yeah. Uh, instead of six points, I'm thinking like seven, eight, nine, something like that. I don't really think so. I don't know. Like, cause I, when the Moldy Crow, once it came out, like people flew it for like, eh, like a couple of months, but it was never really used. It was three points initially. I don't know. Well, but we're also taking into account the new dial, yeah. the actions, that kind yeah. of stuff. I, I just feel like the Moldy Crow is a severe upgrade on the chassis. And that yes. usually means lots of points. But we'll see. Very exciting nonetheless. We haven't even talked about the, the pilots. No, we haven't. We actually had all of the Hawk 290 pilots spoiled for the Scum Faction. Yes. Let's go through them in order of lowest to highest initiative, starting with Torquil Mux at Initiative 2. At the start of the engagement phase, you may choose one ship in your firing arc. Notice how there's no range restriction on that. Mm-hmm. That can just look at the entire map. Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> there in is your firing it. arc, if you do that ship en- engage that initiative zero. Oh! Which is the That's s- so good! So it's the same thing as it used to be. Instead of being ranged one to two in a bubble around Torkoal, he must be inside the firing arc. And that, that might be difficult. Mm. Uh, you know, you don't usually charge your hawk at people. I mean, if you have the Molly Crow, you will. But um, yeah, it's different. It seems to have a lot more scope. And I always liked these old hawk abilities. Mm. I just felt they were they on just- bad frames kind of thing. Yeah. So, a bit of an upgrade to this ability on the much better frame, I think, is going to be significant. And to be that horrible, scummy player, park him uh, right in the corner of the start, have a binary pyre, just run into him for the whole game, and then you can choose anyone on the map because it's a, it's a 90 degree firing arc. Yeah, that's right. You, what, you take the full stop, and then you go one forward and full stop, one forward, and you pretty much see the entire map for the whole game. The whole game. Absolutely. Moving on to Paylob at Initiative 3. At the start of the engagement phase, you may choose one enemy ship in your firing arc at range 0 to 2 if you do transfer one focus or evade token from that ship to yourself. Oh, Paylob got a nerf. Probably fair enough. I mean, Paylob was always, look, the only Hawk pilot you'd ever take on the Scum Faction. Unless you you had redundancy and had to take several. Yeah. Um, But I think that's probably fair enough. His ability is very good. Notice he does not say green tokens, so he doesn't capture calculate tokens. No. Which is fine. Uh, it's focus already. Right. It's it's functionally the same as he always used to do, apart from the fact that it must be in your firing arc. Yeah. And Mr. Dace Bonearm, uh, the brewer's favourite. I've had a lot of people talk on my channel about, oh, this is how you make Dace work, and you just got to pair him with this, this, and this upgrade, and it's, it's crazy. And I never liked him. I found him very functionally difficult to deal with. In Alaska, in um, in 1.0. Yeah, he used to um, stress to give them a damage after... Yeah. Um, which is good. It's not bad, but it, it was. It, it needed such big, elaborate build arounds yeah. and point sinks that yeah. it was really better spent elsewhere. And honestly, Paylob was just better. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, initiative four. After an enemy ship at range zero to three receives at least one ion token, you may spend three charge. If you do, that ship gains two additional ion token, guaranteeing that that ship will be fully ionized. Uh, in case you aren't aware, Owen, mm. uh, now ships must uh, small ships must take one ion token to be ionized. Mm. Medium must take two, and large must take three. So by giving them two additional, you will always fully ionize any ship on the board. Not too impressed with this one, because he only will get one shot at this. No, 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 no. If you have a look at his charges, they replenish. Every he, turn? Yes, he needs to He needs to then bum around for three turns, and he'll get them all back. That little arrow next to the charge thing means it replenishes. We set it on charges and force tokens. I'm still, still not impressed. Not impressed? Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure. <laughs> In three turns, he's going to be dead. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. We don't know the costings. I think it's cheap enough, and you give him an ion cannon. He's going to be a very potent uh, ion platform. Mm. Um, and if it means just tickling on one ion token onto a big ship, and then whack, getting all those ion tokens, even if it's only once a game, that could be potentially good. Mm. I just hope he's not too expensive. He has to be cheap enough to counterbalance that. Yeah. That's the main thing, I think. I think that's one of those good things about this new this new format where they can be like, oh, no one's actually using him. Let's just make him cheaper. Oh, suddenly people are using him. Good. Absolutely, absolutely. Which is not a terrible thing. Oh, the jump master. Oh, the jump master. The old cockroach is back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you just couldn't uh, kill cockroach. it. They can nuke it and it stays alive. Well, this has had a serious downgrade in most of the ship's core stats, but it gets the torpedoes back. Uh, the action bar uh, has taken a bit of a hit. 
uh, focus, target lock, and red barrel roll. And off the back of that focus and target lock, you can red move the arc. That is severely worse in, in terms of turreting. Yeah. But in terms of flexibility, it's getting its torpedoes back. So if you look at it as a strong torp uh, platform mm-hmm. and an average turret platform, that's okay. If it's, well, yeah. if it's costed appropriately. I, I think you need to convince me more. Need to convince you more? Okay, okay. Well, well, apart from that, its core stats are all the same. Two red dice, two green dice. Uh, six hull, three shields. So, again, we've tilted it a bit closer to hull. Yep. The dial has had a severe nerf. We no longer have green hard turns or blue hard turns in this mm. case, which I think is probably fair enough. Yeah. Uh, the signals loop has moved to speed three, which I like. Uh, but now it only does a red signals loop and the to left... The, to the left. There's no uh, signals loop to the right. Yes. Um, uh, white special manoeuvres are dangerous. And yes. I, I completely agree with the logic behind this. Now, you can give this astromech so you can improve the quality of your speed one and twos. Um, so that is an option. Uh, apart from that, yeah, it, it's taken a big blow to the chassis and that's probably fair enough. Um, I'm also interested about the costing of this because we saw recently... The one jump master list that kind of still sort of functions is the four scouts. Yeah. With the courier droid and trick shot, all the free good stuff. Mm. And it's just, it's just very strong. It's just very good. I'm interested to see whether this will still be the um, relative 25 points if it's the 50 points in second edition. I'm thinking they're going to make it 51 points just to stop that from happening. But <laughs> yeah, I know that, that seems brutal, but that list was really good. points. However, it's taken a severe hit to the chassis, so yes. maybe filling four of them just won't be as good as it used to be, and mm. they'll just keep it at 50 points, or even make it a bit cheaper. That's all right. They're going to have to, because this is just not very good right now. Yeah, I think if you can field four of these with a torpedo, that's where it's going to be dangerous. Moving on to the pilots, or the one pilot we had revealed anyway. Yay. Dengar, Initiative 6, equivalent to PS9, same as it was before. Yeah. After you defend, if the attacker is in your forward firing arc, you may spend one charge to perform a bonus attack against the attacker. It comes with one charge and it replenishes. So it's a functional reprint. Yes. Basically. Which is good. Um, I like how they're tracking once per turn things or once per game things with charges. Mm. Makes a lot of sense. It's not much to say about this card power level wise. I just like that. Mm. As um, From a game design standpoint, that makes me happy. Also had the punishing one title revealed while you perform an attack. If the defender is in your front arc, roll one additional attack die. So instead of giving you an additional die across your full 360 or yeah. in your turret, it's giving you an incentive. It's a bit weaker. It's a bit weaker, and it pairs nicely with Dengar's ability. It does. And also you remove the crew slot and add the astromech slot, which is cool because that means you can take like R2 astromech or stuff like that. Haven't had too many of those revealed yet, but I think that's going to be very helpful. And I think like just the core... I think this becomes functionally what it, what they wanted it to be at release. Yeah. A, a place for Dengar. That, that's it. And I think Dengar will still be good. I mean, Dengar still is good. Yeah, Dengar is good. They just, they had, they got rid of the chassis of the Punishing One, which is, well, not the Punishing One, the, the Jump Master, which was just very, very, very good. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and again... They, yeah, they, they tried to waste it away completely. And now we, well, at least I think, I think we'll, we'll see a resurgence of these guys. And we get Torps back. So if you bought three of them, Just you didn't waste your money. Indeed, and it's worth noting that Dengar still allows you to fire torps, uh, even if uh, it was a primary attack and all that kind of stuff. So Great. That, that's good. That's good. So Dengar gets his torps back and potentially can fire advanced proton torpedoes in their opponent's face. We'll see if they come back or whatever. 